up guys, R2 does Inc. Uh, some of you may know me from the OM FGB and OM GB series of ROMs. Others may know me from my new my new ventures into the app world. Um, now, trying to take a little bit of a new direction, help out Roots Wiki TV with some uh, some ROM reviews. So uh, let's get started with the first one. So this week I'm going to be reviewing the Gummy ROM, which is it's a it's a pretty new ROM. Um, it's the first ROM, the first Gummy version that's been built from source. All the other ones were usually TouchWiz versions. Um, when I might when I had my Droid Charge. I used Gummy on that, and it was a really nice ROM, and I was really impressed. When I heard that they were working on the Galaxy Nexus, I knew I had to give it a shot. Um, this is the first first release that's based on Android 404, so it's all the bugs aren't quite worked out yet. Um, I'll get to that later on in the, view, in the video, but I've been very impressed with this build so far. Uh, one of my favorite features is the boot animation. Uh, it actually irritated Bo Sassy Bob quite a bit. If this is a little too obnoxious for you guys, there is an option to turn off the sound or the entire good animation itself. Um, so you guys don't have to be, uh, be entertained with this each time you boot up. But I personally really like it, and it gets on Bob's nerves, so it's, it's a plus in my book. Alright, so first off, I want to say that this is a really smooth ROM. It's actually funny, we went out one night, and I turned down my clock speed to uh, 700 megahertz to save a battery, and it wasn't until two days later when Jeff and I went to compare the uh, benchmark scores between the Nexus and the One X that I realized that I was still running at 700 megahertz. It was actually unnoticeable, like, it, it's still that fast. So this is their first, uh, first 404 build. I'm actually running a test build of Gummy 1.0 they gave me ahead of time. It's a little bit buggier than what you guys will end up getting, but it's still really cool. They wanted to make sure that I had all the new features that are going to be in, in the newer build. So as you see, this build is running Android 404, uh, the lean kernel, uh, which is really nice. I've been really impressed with that with that kernel. I was using it on all the other ROMs that I've that I've tried out. One of my favorite things on this build is all of the lock screen settings. In OMFGB, we had a really cool option, the Sense 3.0 lock screen, and KJAR and team saw this and uh, are actually working on porting it to ICS and it's going to be really cool. So here it is. Um, you can actually pull these into the ring and it functions just like the Sense Lock. Uh, they don't have that working yet, but again, this is just this is a preview build just so that I could give you guys a taste of what's, what's to come. So you pull the ring up and it unlocks like everything else. You can pull the apps into the ring. So I've been running this build for about a week or so and uh, I've been really impressed. Um, it wasn't until yesterday, actually, that I actually set the phone up uh, the way that I personally use it. because so I wanted to get a stock for just the bare bones of Gummy, just how it runs uh, out of the box, as you would say. As you see, it's got a really cool uh, ICS blue theme. Um, I've decked it out all over the place. The battery bar up here, the clock, the icon, the soft keys on the bottom. It looks really nice. Um, running APW widgets, if you guys are uh, curious, and this is the ultimate custom clock widget. Uh, I've had a lot of requests for that for that on Twitter. Um, this this build is really nice. As you see, it's really smooth. Um, the battery life has, has actually been really, uh, really impressive. Um, I use the Interactive X uh, governor for the kernel, which is really impressive. I've had a whole lot of luck with that recently. So this build has a whole lot of the same features that you come to expect out of an AOSP ROM. Um, it has the power toggles from CM, which you can turn on and off with uh, a long click on the settings, settings icon. Uh, it has all the toggles that you would basically ever need. Uh, it has everything from the 4G toggle to sound to lock screen. Uh, I mean, anything that you guys want is there. It has battery options, everything from the battery icon with text to the battery bar to the circle mod. There's the carrier text which you can set, and also something really cool. Instead of the normal carrier text, you can do what they call the MIUI carrier text. So up here you can see, I can change that. Uh, I can sh set that to whatever the, the stock carrier display is, which I have set to R2, R2 to sync. Uh, it's, I think it's a Pretty cool option. I haven't seen that in any other build so far. There's overclock settings built into the ROM, so you don't have to use a third-party app like SetCPU. I personally use SetCPU because I like to support the developer. Um, I bought the app a while back, and it's a really polished app. But they have everything from from the governor to the min and max CPU settings to voltage control. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. Different lock screen styles have different amounts of custom apps that you can set. The ring lock screen, which I'm using right now, only has one. Add that set to messaging because it's a one of the most commonly used apps for me. There's also, of course, rotation settings, landscape, and full 180, which I really, I think is a really nice touch, especially since on the Galaxy Nexus, 
There are obviously no hardware buttons, and there's no reason the phone shouldn't be able to be turned uh, a full 180 degrees. They also have the center clock mod. Uh, you can move the clock to the center, to the side, you can hide it all together. There's the AM and PM that you can set. Uh, the battery options, of course. One of the things that I wish that AOSP had implemented was the ability to change the soft keys. Stock AOSP only comes with home, recents, and back, and they aren't configurable. You can't change the order that they're in. I have mine set up like this because I feel that home is the most used, back is, you know, pretty used pretty used as well, and the other ones just kind of fall into place. These you can reorder, so if you prefer the menu key on the right side, you can set that. If you don't like the, the search key, you don't have to have that. So it gives an extra layer of customization, which I, I find really nice. Some of the more unique features that I, I really liked is the boot animation, which I mentioned earlier, which is pretty funny. I was just testing out Gummy. Of course, it plays the Nyan Cab music, and uh, Bob from the other room goes, Ken, are you really playing that right now? Because it was obviously really loud and it echoed in the house. And it was, it was funny. Every time I booted up, Bob gets this look on her face like, come on, really? It's That in and of itself is a, is a plus for me. So one of the cool, one of my favorite things about Gummy is that you can change the color of the notification icons. So that in, if you have a, a blue theme, for instance, you can actually change this color. Thanks for that, Adam. You can actually change this color to match everything else. It's a nice touch that I haven't seen in any other ROMs and adds a, uh, a cohesiveness to the rest of the theme. Another thing that I thought was really cool is that if you tap on this date up here, it will actually bring you to the calendar app, which I think is, is pretty useful. A lot of people will use a calendar app quite often, and instead of having a shortcut on the home screen or on the last screen, you can just come up and tap, and there you are. It's nice and fast. Gummy also offers a whole lot of last screen options. You have everything from the ICS lock screen to the sliders, which we all know and love from, from Gingerbread and below. They have rotary, the revamped rotary, the honeycomb lock screen with the ripples and all, the ring lock screen, and of course the sense lock screen from old FGB. Each of these lock screen styles have different options. Each of these lock screen styles have different options. For example, the rotary lock screen can hide the arrows and many others. Another really cool thing in Gummy is the music widget. I'm using the revamped ICS music. Some other really nice touches in Gummy are the quiet hours. What this allows you to do is set a start and end time where your phone will either mute the notifications, disable vibrations, disable the notification light, so that you're not interrupted while you're sleeping or busy at work. They also have the backlight settings where you can enable custom, custom light levels for the backlight. Another thing I found really useful is the extended sound settings. Instead of just hitting the volume up and turning only that on, you can hit this little settings icon on the side and change all of the sound settings. The ROM also comes pre-installed with J.R. Rummy's ROM toolbox, which you can find a review of on Sassy Bob's channel. It also comes with Root Browser, which is a root-enabled file explorer so that you don't have to buy a third-party app such as Root Explorer. Gummy also, of course, comes with its own custom wallpapers, which they have quite a few of, and even a live wallpaper, which I found really nice. There's a whole lot of room to choose from, from black and white to colored, and even a couple old Liberty wallpapers. Of course, no ROM is without its issues. As you see up here, I have the MIUI battery, and it's charging right now. And if you watch it right here, it seems to slow down and go about a pixel at a time. This can be misleading if you look at your phone while it's charging and happen to catch it right at the end and mistake it for fully charged. I also had issues when setting the custom apps on the ICS lock screen. They don't always update right away. I had to actually force close the settings application before I was able to get these to update. And it took about two or three times to actually get the app to update on the lock screen itself. Again, these are new features that are still being polished up. Another issue that I found is that some of the settings actually take a reboot to stick, which I found a little unnecessary as I know that there is a way it's a little hacky, but you can do it without a reboot. So in general, I was really impressed with this ROM, and I hope you guys give it a try. You can follow KJAR and Adam the Cashew. Adam the Cashew is actually going to be on Roots Wiki Live tomorrow night, uh, so I hope you guys check it out. Thanks for watching, and make sure you guys are subscribed to Super User TV. That's youtube.com slash rootswiki TV. And uh, make sure you follow me on, on Twitter, and let me, let me know what you guys want to see reviewed. Uh, we have like 15 devices in the house, so Odds are we're going to have what you guys want to see. Uh, if you guys have a really cool ROM, a new ROM that you guys have seen and hasn't gotten a whole lot of popularity, let me know. Um, I'm always out to, you know, check out the new stuff.
So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next week.